for nursing home care, and I've talked about this in previous presentations, you have to distinguish between what it would take for you to say you were going to go to a nursing home, right, versus what Mass Health says, because what you would say was, I got to be in really bad shape to go to a nursing home, right? I never want to leave my house. But if you're Mass Health, you need to require assistance with two of the activities of daily living and you need to have a skilled nursing need. And we were talking about those skilled nursing needs, not every day, just on occasion. So the activities of daily living, bathing, dressing, eating, toileting, transferring. Transferring means getting up, getting across the room, sitting down. If you can get across the room in a walker, but you can't get up out of your chair or sit down, then you need help with transferring. If you need assistance with those, and, and they, they're called activities of daily living, but it doesn't have to be every day. I was talking to Patty Surveys, who did this presentation last month, and talked about the fact that at many, many facilities, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, at, at many assisted living facilities even, they'll cut up your meat for you if you can't cut it up, you know, like if it's steak, right? Well, that is actually assistance with eating, right? Uh, if you need help with showering, if you need someone to be there when you're in the, in the shower, right? Uh, and help you, and then also to help you get out and dress. Well, that's assistance with two of the activities of daily living. That's showering, and then that's dressing, right? So, so if you need help with two of the activities of daily living, uh, then, that, then you've met the medical requirement for being eligible for nursing home care, and you therefore qualify for this program. Next slide. So um, if you're Frank and Mary, Right? Remember, I'm just, this is a review slide. Remember, they've got their house, they've got these other assets, they've got that much money. Frank's got that amount of money in income. Mary's got that amount. He's got $2,000 in income. She's got $500. So either one of them individually, if they got frail, would qualify for the frail elder waiver because they've each got income individually that's below $2,130 per month. And at any point, if one of them got frail, they could simply transfer all of their assets to the other one immediately, the day before they apply for the frail elder waiver. There's no look back period on transfers between spouses, right? So it's a huge program. Next slide. And, 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 but finally, I just want to use this because a lot, some people will just say, well, you know, that's fine, but that's more money than I make, right? And, and so, the, so one of the things I want you to remember is that if you are over $2,130 per month, um, you can still qualify for this program, except there is then a big deductible. And the deductible is um, all of your income over $522 per month. This slide is slightly incorrectly written. This is my fault. So if, for example, Frank's income, instead of being $2,000 a month, I uh, remember it was $1,500 in Social Security and $500 in a pension. Suppose his income were $2,500 a month. 2000 in Social Security and $500 in a pension, right? Um, what, you, what he would do then, he could qualify for the frail elder waiver if he, need, if he meets the standard with the two activities of daily living. What Mass Health would then do is they would say, we're going to subtract from that, that $2,500 a month this $522. Don't ask me where that comes from, I'll tell you. That's the federal poverty level if you're a family of one, right? We're going to subtract that amount, right? <coughs> And, and after we've done that, we see that your remaining income is $1,978, right? That is really the deductible, $1,978. If you have expenses that are higher than that, we, MassHealth, will pick them up. We, MassHealth, will pick them up. So this would not help Frank if he had this very, very high income, unless he needed a lot of home care. But if he did need a lot of home care, once he had met that deductible, $1,978 per month, everything else would be paid for by MassHealth. So MassHealth will pay a lot, a lot of money. Now, you folks do a lot of frail elder waiver stuff. 
Yes, we do. Can you just talk about that and, the, and kind of how, what, the, what the process is and the application of that jazz, how, how it works? Uh, we are the providers for the, um, for the individuals who qualify and um, are eligible. So we um, get a call from Jackie or one of the case managers at uh, Elder Services and that deploys us into the community. And um, we work off of a care plan that's developed by initially uh, the elder on the Elder Services side by a nurse who comes out and um, assesses your living situation. And then um, that is transferred over to us. We have a nurse then who goes out and goes specifically um, through the process of showering or um, whatever activities of daily living you need assistance with, if it's a personal care um, that you do need help with, and then if you need more on the homemaker side, um, then that care plan gets set up and, and we go into motion. And, and, you, and you folks decide, um, or who decides how many hours of home care uh, a person is entitled to? Elder services. Elder services. Yes. And is there any limit to the number of hours that they can decide a person needs in order to stay at home? They have guidelines uh, that they give to us, much like a much earlier slide where yeah. you, you cited three hours a week for um, a certain level and six hours a week for another level. And depending on the services you qualify for, there are um, services that we can provide. So yeah. they're very so they'll they're tell itemized. You. They kind of um, eked out a, a one, one at a time or, you know, not one hour at a time, but one type of service at a time. So, so many hours for personal care, so many hours for homemaker, so many hours for something else. There's about maybe six things on the menu. So there's, a, there's a, and they can provide a lot. Yes, a lot. there are a lot of services. A lot. And yep. is there any copay in any of that? Any individual copay? Not from our side. Right. Interestingly, there is no copay. Once you've qualified mm -hmm. for this, there is no copay. And, the inter and by the way, an interesting piece of this that I found out, so this is my piece of trivia that I had mentioned earlier that I learned today from Jackie Cage. So there is this wonderful program run by Leslie Clapp that runs out of here two days a week and out of Edgartown Council on Aging two days a week. And it's an assisted uh, day program for folks who've got early to mid middle stages of dementia where there's you know, supervision and if supportive day yeah. and they'll pick people up and they'll bring them and you know, be with them for the day and then bring them home, right? Now, be because that program does not have a so-called medical piece to it, right? It is technically not a program that Mass Health funds through the Frail Elder Waiver. And so, when I was talking to somebody today, we were talking about this program. I said, "Well, I don't, I don't think that, that her program is going to work," you know. So I called, but, but it's Mathers Vineyard, right? So I, I said, "We're just sitting there." I said, "Well, let me call her." So I called her, and then Leslie said, "Oh, call Jackie Cage," you know. There's some way that they work this out. I always love that. This is classic Martha's Vineyard. There are more programs provided here than any place else in the state that I have found to help elders stay at home. It's unbelievable how good this place is. So I talked to Jackie, and Jackie said, oh, well, the way this works is when you, qual you start off by qualifying with us through that program right at the beginning. Remember the one at the beginning where you could get like three hours of basic and then like six hours under ECOP, right? And once you've qualified, for us, with, with us, you then go and you qualify under the, for the Frail Elder Waiver, right? And as long as you can qualify under the Frail Elder Waiver because you meet the income criteria, right? Then what we do is, un, under the earlier program, under the kind of the one with the ECOP, e under ECOP, we will pay, we will do with that, with this, with Jack, with Jackie's, with Leslie's program, like we do with the home care people. That is, we'll pay for it, but we'll charge you a deductible. Right? But it's kind of a large deductible. But once you qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver, the deductible goes down to zero. So if you qualify for the Frail Elder Waiver, you can, you can have your, your spouse or whatever coming to this program. It's pretty much, it's for the full, it's not all five days a week, but it's a pretty much full day, right? It's, it's a big chunk of day. It's a big it's chunk a of day yeah. for free. For free. That's because it's Martha's Vineyard. This is like just a special place. So next, next, thank you. So next slide. Finally, I just want you to be aware of this. Um, you, as you may have gathered from this, it's there, there is this part of the current system that's stupid. I mean, it's just stupid that if you're Frank and you've got twenty-one hundred and thirty dollars per month of income, 
you can qualify through the frail elder waiver and get visiting nurses to come in and provide all kinds of daycare. And by the way, that's when you say I say all kinds. As a regulatory matter, there is no limit to how much elder services could provide. Right? As a practical matter, typically they won't provide more than 40 hours a week. But that's a lot of daycare, right? But if you're frank and you make $2,131 a month, as opposed to $2,130 a month, there is this huge deductible that you have to pay. A deductible that was equal in Frank's case to like $1,900 a month. That is crazy. And this legislation aims to change that, so I just want you to be aware of it. S-517, which is currently in healthcare finance at the state level, would say that if you're above the $2,130 per month by a dollar, you have to pay a deductible that is a dollar, right? If you're over by $2, you pay a deductible that is $2, right? Which makes it much more consistent with how this program really is supposed to work. So finally, next slide. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we just went through a lot of material. If you, got, if you, if you just want to see this again, because you just love watching it, you know, then you can always, we're up, we'll upload this onto our YouTube channel in the next couple of weeks. Also, it'll be on cable. That's why Tom, our wonderful friend, is, is, is here, so that we can kind of get the program to cable. It'll be on cable, typically a lot. Uh, any questions to, for any of our, my wonderful guests or for me?